So our next speaker is going to be Sushma from Kathmandu Living Labs, and she's going to talk about uh, what they're doing in Nepal and how they're integrating OSM data into the local governance there. So uh, the floor is yours. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. This is me, Sushma Gimire, representing Kathmandu Living Labs from Nepal. I am a geomatics engineer, graduated from Kathmandu University on the year 2020. Uh, I have been engaged with OpenSheetMap ever since my days in college. Uh, I was first introduced to OpenSheetMap as my college project, and I have been working in this area ever since. I was uh, I joined Kathmandu Living Lab as an intern during my college days, and have been working with KLL now for about 1.5 to 2 years. And at KLL, we organize various mapping sessions, trainings, campaigns related to OpenStreetMap. And for the past few months, we have been working with the local governance system of the Nepal, local government administrative units of Nepal, and trying to introduce OpenStreetMap as a governance tool to them. And here we are to share our experience of working with local government and OSM. Uh, this session is in collaboration with my colleague, Aishura Shrestha, who is not physically present here, so I will be representing her too. So now let's move on to our content. Uh, let me talk about the Kathmandu Living Labs, Labs first. Kathmandu Living Labs is widely known as KLL. Uh, we are Nepal's leading civic tech company who uh, uh, work in advancement of the open street map. We have trained and engaged more than thousands of people in the South Asian region of the nation, South Asian region and uh, Nepal. We are interested in providing data-centric and civic tech solutions to the various sectors uh, like governance, uh, private sector, businesses, and many more. So yeah, these are the, some of the glimpses of our office. And uh, in the lower corner, you can see we are having lunch in the garden area of our office. So yeah, in this session, uh, I will be sharing about our experiences uh, of uh, how we work in the open how we work in the area of embedding the open ship map in local governance system of Nepal. How what were the phases of activities that we conducted and the key points that we extract after reflecting the activities we have conducted in open ship map. So yeah. Uh, our intent was to leverage the open street map as a governance tool in the local administrative units of the Nepal. And how we did so? We did so by training and engaging the local youth and local leaders of a region. Uh, we provided them open mapping trainings and, and engaged them in open mapping activities. We believe that uh, for the good governance, the ability of the youth to pose and ask the right questions is one of the important uh, aspects of the good governance. The questions can be simple and powerful. For example, how many hospitals are there within my region? Or how much of the uh, roads are blacked up within my region? How are these facilities and amenities distributed within my region? These simple questions can be uh, very much powerful. And our years of mapping experiences that allowing and introducing the concept of open mapping and engaging the youth uh, in the mapping activities uh, allows the youth to think about these questions. Uh, it uh, creates an inclusiveness among the youth, and it allows them to think crit critically and ask the correct questions to the government of their region. So yeah, with the same agenda and intent, we conducted a series of activities, mapping sessions, campaign in different phases. In the first phase, we would work with the municipality or local government region of the Nepal. And in second phase, we would organize open mapping activities in provincial level. Uh, two well local bodies were selected for the second phase. Yeah, the, let me discuss about the federal system of uh, Nepal first. Uh, Nepal is divided uh, into seven provinces, and among the seven provinces, there are 753 local bodies, which I will be addressing as municipality and rural municipality during this session. And this municipality and rural municipality are further divided into smaller administrative units known as wards in case of Nepal. So yeah, the general workflow of our series of activities was we would plan and select the local bodies that we would like to work in uh, the upcoming days and months. We coordinated with these local bodies. We conducted a series of mapping trainings, campaigns, and sessions in these local bodies. 
We mapped and validated the data within these local bodies according to their needs. We uploaded this data into the OpenStreetMap. We created uh, the map product. We wanted uh, that uh, the output we create remains beyond the life of our intervention. Therefore, we wanted to create some substantial output. So we created a localized map product and handed over them to these municipalities and rural municipalities. And we are now planning for the way forward. Let me move on to the detail of my workflow now. So yeah, in the first phase, we would select the local government bodies that we will like to work with based on the size of size, location, commitment, availability of the youth, and experience of mapping leads at KLL. We selected three local bodies. They were Rupa Rural Municipality. Rupa Rural Municipality is uh, the municipality situated in the western region of Nepal and it's uh, named after the beautiful Lake Rupa. You can also see the picture of Rupa over here. And Namabuddha municipality would be the other central municipality located in the central region of the Nepal. You can, it is famous for the Gumba and the mountain range that you can see uh, in the picture. And Mithila Bihari municipality would be third municipality which is situated in the uh, Torai and the eastern region of Nepal. It's famous for its art, culture, and temples, and many more. So yeah, this is the geographical coverage of the municipalities that we selected to work in the first phase. Uh, in order to the foster, in order to foster the collaboration within the local bodies and us, we signed MOU with MOU with each of the local bodies. We established that there would be three stakeholders for the series of activities that we are going to conduct. That would be one local body, two KLM, and the local use of the community. The local bodies were responsible for facilitating and supporting in the coordination and mobilizing the local community. Kathmandu Living Labs was responsible for conducting open mapping activities, validating the data, checking the accuracy of the data uh, that the youth would be collecting, and last but not the least, local youths were the ones who would be actually be involved in mapping activities, who would actually be trained by the Kathmandu Living Labs and providing the data to the uh, local bodies. We engaged about 44 youths during this process. So yeah, our first phase was uh, done in, uh, we provided two-day beginners training to our uh, youth in the three different local bodies. The main intention of this role, organizing these trainings was we wanted to train the youth about open sheet map, concept of open sheet map, and wanted them to go on the real project, go on the ground and collect some real data so that they would get, uh, get idea of what's going on around their community, what's the need of their community, what are the resources that their community has, and what are the resources that their community lack. Therefore, we wanted them to uh, go to the ground and collect some data after we organized mapping training. We introduced some mapping tools and mapping methods to uh, uh, these youth so that they will be able to do so. Yeah, this is the training module that we uh, shared with our participants. This training module was adjusted on, on the basis of localized need of every uh, community, every local body that we are working with. We would introduce the concept of uh, OSM history evolution, some of the mapping tools. We also introduced the concept of field mapping. We did demo data collection with them. Since I have already mentioned, we wanted them to go to the real field and collect the data that is available within their region based on the localized need of their government. We uh, plan the data collection activity on the basis of their interest. For example, we say local knowledge is an important aspect in open sheet map. Therefore, we would assign a smaller administrative unit to this local youth on the basis of their local knowledge of any region. So yeah, we plan the data collection activities with them and by them. Yeah, these are some of the glimpses of training that we conducted. So yeah, in the phase two, we realized that uh, engaging the local youth was one of the techniques that we have been using in uh, to introduce the concept of open sheet map to the community. But if we introduce the concept of open sheet map to our local leaders, what will happen will they will train the local youth in their region, right? Uh, it is uh, quite different from the traditional approach that we have been working with. For example, if we select the local leaders of the community, they will now further train the local youth that are active in their community. Uh, it's, it's kind of pyramid model. Uh, so it's kind of sustainable way of training the youth within a community too. And it would also give uh, opportunity to engage the local government directly. For example, 
we uh, introduced the concept of open ocean map to the IT officers of government, uh, Nepal government. IT officers are the local leaders of their community, and they are also the part of the local bodies. So that what that would do is uh, we will be directly working with the local government and also be disseminating the idea of open ocean map to the community. And now we have now created a framework where uh, the training activities will go the beyond of our intervention. So we uh, conducted two-day residential event for the second phase. We organized a workshop named Open Mapping for Sustainable Local Governance in collaboration with the MOFADA, which stands for Ministry of Federal Affairs and General Administration, Nepal. And 12 IT officers from the Nepal were selected for the second phase. Yeah, this is the geographical coverage of the area where we conducted our uh, second phase of mapping training. And in the second phase, uh, the training model was a, a bit different. We would introduce the uh, uh, more advanced uh, mapping tools and method, more map numbers of mapping tools and method. For example, we were introducing them about mapillary, OSM, and organic maps. We were introducing them about the concept of OSM tracker. And we would also teach them how to download the data within the region and how can they geo-visualize them using the simple tools like Mapbox, Mapbox Offer, how to create a heat map. And uh, since we wanted to understand the local need of the government so that we can better integrate the OSM as governance tool into their local body, therefore we also organized focus group discussion within uh, this two-day residential event. And some of the findings of uh, focus group discussion were uh, the participants shared that the open sheet map can be a very much helpful tool for creating a geo database within the region. In the country like Nepal, where it's very much uh, difficult to find updated data of any region, uh, open sheet map would be a very much helpful tool that would help them to create up to date data. And, uh, the availability of data like primary roads are easily available, but the secondary data, secondary roads data is quite hard to find in case of Nepal. Similarly, the electricity distribution, the updated uh, data of land use, and the minor data like hand pumps in every house, taps, uh, availability of taps in the house, these were some of the data that uh, these local birds were interested in. Similarly, we also asked what are the challenges that you might face if you want to embed the open sheet map as governance tool within your local body. And they shared that the internal conflict within their organization is one of the major hurdles that they have to face. For example, in case of Nepal, there are two kinds of staff currently engaged in uh, any local body. There are the young staff who are tech savvy and more tech friendly, and there are the uh, old staff who are not that tech friendly, not that tech savvy. So they would uh, find it a, a environment of conflict and the old staff would not agree to introduce the tools, the digital tools like open sheet map within the daily functioning of their organization. And third, they also share that since OSM is a continuous process, the, it is quite hard to maintain uh, the governance tool and due to the less number of technical officers and unstable political situation within the country and lack of interest or awareness of the uh, public representative are some of the hurdles that they might face within their local body if they want to embed the idea of open sheet map within their region. So yeah, these are some of the glimpses of uh, the second phase training that we organize in 2 local bodies. So yeah, uh, uh, I would also like to share some of the mapping training experience that we uh, have after conducting series of activities within these different local bodies. We realized that gamifying the mapping training session would interest, uh, would scale up the interest of uh, uh, participants way more than you could ever imagine. For example, we would organize simple OSM quiz using the various online tools and uh, the participant will, would find it as a challenge that they can take part in. They would find it very much interested. And it would also be a tool to measure what they have learned during our sessions. So yeah, they were very much interested in uh, the OSM quiz. Similarly, we would also assign tasks like feel OSM, feel the open sheet map, find the house in the open sheet map, find your community in open sheet map. And if you do not find your exact house in the open sheet map, please map it. So the activities like this would uh, allow the and uh, inspire or motivate the participant to actually make a contribution and actually make a building within their open sheet map. That would be their very first contribution in open sheet map.
Similarly, uh, find some of the tasks like searching Kathmandu Living Lab office, share your locations. Some of the tasks like this would also uh, uh, would inspire them to work in OpenStreetMap more. Similarly, other things to be considered would be uh, prepare a detailed mapper specification would be some of the things that we would like to consider. For example, we had idea that we wanted to work with tech-friendly people, but uh, uh, you would also like to consider socio-demographic dimensions of these mappers. For example, accessibility of these participants to vehicles, laptop, mobile phones would be very much uh, uh, thing, very much uh, important aspect in, if you are organizing mapping training. And we uh, we conducted the open street mapping training with the students in one of the local bodies and realized that the students do not have access to email accounts. So they cannot create an open street mapping account easily. So things like that would be some of these, uh, some of the things that you would like to consider beforehand. Similarly, you would also like to check the internet availability within the region and in the country like Nepal where uh, the emails and Slack are not that used. We had to get dependent on the social media platform like Facebook, Facebook to, in order to uh, connect with the participants and we had to set our communication channels in Facebook. Similarly, the other thing that would I would like to highlight would be the aspect of gender. We keep on talking about the uh, inclusivity, gender inclusivity in OpenStreetMap, and we realized that uh, I was the one of the female trainer that uh, had gone to the field and actually trained the participant. And I realized that the female participant of our OpenStreetMap in training were quite close to me and getting intimidated by my male female colleague. They would not answer the questions and uh, queries that that were being asked by their male trainer, but they were very much close and finding very much com comfortable with me. You can also see a picture that they were hugging me actually. So yeah, the aspect of gender is really important in the operation mapping community too. So yeah, we conducted the, we wanted to create some substantial output after uh, our active series of activities and hand over this product to the local bodies so that there will be a sustainable output. Uh, there will be something that will remain after the beyond, after uh, the beyond the intervention, our intervention, so that we conducted the remote mapping activities and data collection activities in three different local bodies. Uh, the data collection activities was based on the localized need of every municipality. For example, the Mithila Bihari municipality was interested in collecting the brick clean data because brick cleans are one of the important aspects of their economy. So they were interested in uh, collecting the data of their regions. Similarly, Rupa had recently introduced uh, installed solar panels within their region, and they were specifically interested in collecting the solar panels data. So what we did, uh, did was we conduct, uh, collected the data based on the localized need of every local government, and we uploaded this in OpenStreetMap based on the availability of the resources within the local bodies and KLL. Data collection methods was report mapping and field mapping done with tools like Hot Tasking Manager, Johnson, Kobo. And these were some of the data that we collected uh, using remote mapping. We would collect building footprints, roads, land use, waterways. We collected amenities like hospitals, schools, and temples, porn shops, and other data mutually agreed upon. And throughout our mapping and data collection activity, we were able to collect more than 22,000 buildings and more than 400 kilometers of road was traced in open street map. More than 2,000 POIs were collected during the field data collection activity. And uh, as uh, we uh, were, had collected this data, we created the municipal and ward level map in collaboration with the youth. The youth would provide the data to us and we would create the data, uh, create the map of, with the help of this data and hand over this to the local bodies. Uh, this map making process was done in several iterations and during our iteration one of our export has visited to the local body and what we realized that the local representative realized that the um, boundary in open street map the administrative boundary in the open street map has not been updated it's outdated they shared that the boundary that is uh, currently traced in open street map is updated and they wanted to update their boundary. So yeah, you can see the enthusiasm of the local uh, local people, how they are interested in the tools like OpenStreetMap. These are these some of the glimpses that that our mapping lead is updating the boundary of OpenStreetMap. So yeah, with this updated boundary, we created maps uh, of three different local bodies and handed over to them. We also created the wide level maps with smaller administrative units of 
uh, every community and we handed over them to the respective local bodies. Yeah, this is the message from one of the local bodies that we have worked with. They are thanking Kathmandu Living Lab for organizing such mapping training sessions within their region. And this is one message from one of the participants that uh, share that we conducted that was a participant of residential training. they were very much interested about the operation mapping within their local body. So yeah, embedding the child, embedding the tools like open sheet map within the local governance system is all, already a challenge. And uh, uh, despite this, uh, these were some of the challenges that we faced. Uh, in the country like Nepal, will, where literacy is already low, map literacy is way low, and you will not expect the people to understand the concept of open sheet map easily. And there were also some of the challenges uh, in uh, decision making by the local bodies lack of ex lack of digital literacy access to the resources internet availability and moving forward we see that some of the municipality despite of this challenge are, ex uh, are expressing their interest in scaling up the open mapping activity within their region uh, mithila Bihari municipality was participant of phase one and mohottari rural municipality was participant of phase two and uh, now we are currently working on understanding how the local government of this region works and how we can better embed the OSM into their daily functioning system. And similarly, Andapuna municipality, which was the neighbor municipality of the open mapping activity that we organized, is also interested and inspired from, the, uh, inspired from our activity. So yeah, the impact we have created would be the youth learn new digital skills and local units now have access to the localized database. For example, the Bricklin data is only mapped in Mithila Bihari region and not in other regions. So there, there would be a localized geo database and train youth and materials and modules that they can access beyond the life of this project. So reflecting back, we have now established a method and a framework of organizing mapping training within this region. And we are now planning to develop and disseminate the other tools that we uh, have been creating. For example, this would be a portal that we have been working. This is a prototype of the portal. And uh, this is the region where you can see what are the existing projects within, the, within your region. And this is the map of your region. So uh, embedding this kind of portals within the uh, municipality website would be an interesting uh, way of integrating open sheet map within their local governing system. So yeah. What we have done is on the youth side, we have engaged the civic engagement and, and uh, imposed the critical thinking and introduced the collaboration of youth in local governing system. And on the local governance part, we have taken the initiative for data-driven development. And in this way, we have combined the two stakeholders, local youth and local body, into creating a good governance. And uh, the... Um, uh, things like accountability and transparency within the local governance, which is also one of the aspects of good governance, has now been emphasized with uh, activities like this. So yeah, you can uh, we can have a conversation after this session too, if uh, the session is way too long. So we can have a conversation if you have any questions afterwards. So yeah, thank you everyone. Have a good day. Thank you very much.